Jesus Christ, it's quick. <laughs> um, yeah, it is damn quick. Guys, Alex Peak Performance Reviews, welcome to another vlog. I'm here with the new Audi RS5, and um, yeah, I'll tell you. First look at some of the interior <clears throat> highlights really. Bang and Olsen, stereo. Obviously this is a pretty pricey car, but I've always loved Audi interior more than pretty much anything out there. Look at this. RS embossed seats, bucket seats, look sublime, front and back, really, really nice. Got um, Alecki adjustability here. I'm just gonna move my seat to where I need to be, which is obviously probably gonna take about 10 minutes because I'm a short ass. Everything from these beautiful RS bucket seats to this just beautiful flat bottom steering wheel. I just, every, just, everything just feels not just premium, it feels super premium. That's the way I describe some of the Audi interiors, especially the high-end Audi interiors. This uh, model is circa £70,000 with the extras that it's got on it, including this beautiful panoramic view uh, roof that we do really, really like. And I would spec that, I must admit, I love that. Um, but yeah, interior is gorgeous. Um, obviously it's an auto. Um, pretty much um, all of these cars these days in the Audi range are auto. Um, but yeah, it's beautiful. I cannot wait to drive this car. So yeah, watch on a up procedure and, oh, sound. Wing mirrors fold out. This comes up. We are in the RS5 uh, Sportsback uh, model. And uh, yeah, obviously, ignore the miles per gallon that all us media bods have been getting out of this car um obviously that's not my my responsibility and my fault at the moment um but yeah i'll be intrigued to see what i do get but if i'm honest if you buy a car like this you don't really worry too too much about that i i from what i hear if you drive these careful you can get them up to um 24 around 25 um, miles per gallon range you're not going to get much better than that but if you drive somewhere fast you do want it to be able to do um, you know good reasonable miles per gallon so you can get between fuel stops to fuel stations. Um, but apparently it's got a really, really big tank. So um, yeah, everything else is um, lovely. It just all looks gorgeous. So yeah, love the virtual cockpit, obviously as always. Let's go and drive it. Let me shut up and let's go and drive it. You can feel the whole car vibrate. Obviously it's a V6 as well. So. You almost do get that American muscle feel, obviously not from a V8, but it still kind of does that kind of rocking thing, and I'll, I'll, I'll do it again for you. Oh, the whole car just vibrates, it's awesome. Let's uh, have a little uh, listen to see how that sounds like outside of it. Internally, you can't tell there's any difference between um, an old going, uh, an old outgoing RS uh, model car. Um, but now, actually, internally, the car sounds amazing because you're getting a lot of acoustics coming from uh, the the cockpit and the engine bay, which is great. So it doesn't change the feel to the driver. But externally, it's definitely a little bit more muted out the back of the tailpipes um, because of the OPF filters, um, which obviously do a, a really really good job or should i say bad job uh, of kind of muting the sound obviously from people like myself or petrol heads like us um we don't want to hear a quiet car but i know um legislation says that we need to quieten down cars and they have been getting pretty damn loud things like La lamborghinis and stuff like that how how some of those cars are legal i do not know but um look it sounds amazing out of the engine bay it's beautiful it's one of the nicest sounding cars out of the factory for anywhere in and around that price for sure it's, it's absolutely amazing like all uh, Audis and RS model cars, you always have a plethora of kind of uh, things at your fingertips and, you know, to be able to change and play around with. So um, I don't like to complicate things too, too much. So I'm not gonna, um, you know, do too much to get in our way of um, the driver dynamics of what I'm after and what I'm looking to achieve. Obviously the first, th first things first, and we'll bridge that kind of like um, 
subject straight away if you will um, this is circa seventy thousand pounds with options so sixty six thousand um, pounds what does it need to compete with it needs to compete with things like the m4 the m3 um, and cars like that really other than that there's not an abundance of cars in and around that kind of uh, money that this has to compete with the thing is you've got to remember that it, it, it's all-wheel drive so it's all-wheel drive and it's beautiful the interior is amazing and it's comfortable and, and it will get everyone in it uh, now I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure that it looks a reasonable size in the back there so I think you'd get um, a decent size a um, couple of adults in the back there as well as um, kid, you know large large kids giant kids um, so it's a, it's a decent size the uh, boot is obviously huge being a sports back it's, it's got a really really good boot good uh, good size boot as well um, but the most important thing is yeah dynamically um, you can take this car out and enjoy it in all conditions it doesn't matter whether it's damp whether it's dry whether it's snowing you can still nearly use all of its power or close to all of its power unlike a lot of other sporty cars and the aforementioned M3 and M4 because at the end of the day if you try and drive one of those cars when it's damp like it is out there at the moment 16 degrees and damp if I was to do this and I'm, this is only on uh, normal mode drop it down it wouldn't group Jesus Christ it's quick <laughs> Um, yeah, it is damn quick. Like every Audi um, RS range car, it's um, nearly always more powerful than they even say. So um, it's 450 horsepower, or 450 PS, about actually 450 horsepower. Realistically, it's probably likely to be a little bit more. And I categorically can tell you that... <laughs> Jesus Christ. I reckon it's more than 450 horsepower. It must have close to 500 horsepower. The crazy thing about this car is, genuinely, these these RS range cars, they feel like they feel like a supercar. They they feel close to that kind of performance. It's just if you blip it down, the response is just insane. It just flipping heck, man but it looks after you so much, and that's what I love about this car. But normally, a car that looks after you, has all wheel drive or four wheel drive, it can be a bit boring. But all of these RS range cars of late have impressed me so much, because dynamically, Audi are doing something that no one else does with the all wheel drive platform. And I don't know what it is, I'd like to speak to the engineers, but it probably is something as sim, sim it's something as simple as making sure that the bias is lively and because of that it just feels amazing now this car is a relatively heavy car at close to two ton or around two ton uh, so i'm told again links in the bio to the correction or, or to any tech spec it feels dynamically as though it's way way lighter than that and you know it, it it doesn't show it and it carries the weight really really well the, the chassis stays really really composed and flat but it seems that they they button these cars up so well that everything just works so so well and again when you've got that um this beautiful steering wheel in front of you and this um these dials with the power and the torque kind of gauges that are telling you what power it, it's putting out and torque as a percentage it's just a beautiful place to be it's just you f i think you do it just makes you feel special it makes you feel like you're doing well and you're doing all right you know um you don't have to feel better than anyone else on the road but you just feel special in this car um everything works so so well and it's so impressive that it is like a little daily drivable supercar that's the best way i can describe it it, it does things that a supercar um, does dynamically and performance wise pretty much not quite but you know there or thereabouts definitely but it does other things that a supercar um does uh, or can't do much better because at the end of the day you can't put you know the groceries and all your all your shopping and stuff like that in a um, supercar because often they come with you know uh, 
a little bonnet that basically you can only get one bag of shopping in but this you really can um, go to town with and uh, or to the supermarket in and you can get all your groceries in all your shopping a massive shop get it in there easy and probably still put your golf clubs in the back as well and then it just becomes more about the fun I'm not even in sports mode at the moment, but this, the, the roads are atrocious and dewy and horrible, but this just takes it in its stride. And it just grips and goes. <laughs> and that's what you need. Good brakes. And a good chassis because there's times where sometimes on these little rows like this when it's slippery that cars like this can save your bloody life it is just so quick but so impressive it's excellent so yeah as we're not moving let's talk a bit more about the numbers 450 ps near 450 horsepower and a shed ton of torque 600 newton meters of torque 600 newton meters of torque it's insane so this now uses um and obviously gone are the days of v8 so i'm not saying actually gone are the days but um there's less cars that are having things like v8s and motors are getting smaller and we understand that and know that um audi have ditched the v the v8 and they're putting a 2.9 liter um turbocharged motor um, that yeah, kicks out 450 PS, 450 brake horsepower, give or take, um, and 600 Newton meters of torque. That is huge. So um, really, really more responsive than ever before, even than the V8, um, despite them having very good low down torque. This has more low down torque than the V8 ever did, um, which is amazing. And what I do love about this is the power band and the rev range, or the power band in the rev ranges, um, everywhere it's everywhere the power if you drop the power and you put your foot on the throttle this basically will get up and go no matter what rpm it's sitting at it's just phenomenal and mind-blowing at that again what has it got to compete with well the m3 and the m4 in most and everyday situations in the uk in this country this probably can work better most of the time um, unless you want to be a bit of a lout and larry like actually often i am um, but this just every day is just such a good car to kind of use and uh, it gets some attention as well especially in this uh, uh, sonoma uh, green which i must admit i'm one of the only few i swear on social networks that like doesn't like green <laughs> Don't kill me, don't kill me. I don't know why, I don't know why. I don't know whether it feels too grown up and I'm still, I still feel like I'm an 18 year old inside. Yes, visually I don't look like an 18 year old anymore. Of course, 21 I look. But um, I don't like green cars. I, I, I don't know why, I don't know why. I feel like it feels like they're just too grown up and a little bit older man. I don't know. That being said, I've seen loads of people that are younger that have said, oh, I love the green. I'm not saying I don't like the Sonoma Green, I must admit in the flesh, now seeing it, it does suit this car and it's warming on me. Would I get it in the green? I don't think I would, but it gets a lot of attention, people love it, I must admit. So if you want a lot of attention, um, get the green. It might be just the car, it could be the green, I don't know. But one thing's for certain, this Audi RS5 is stunning. I didn't know what word to use it. it is the most it's one of the most gorgeous cars to come out of any factory for years and years it is beautiful and i love it it is stunning uh, as a and as a family car go um I've, I've heard a few people say they prefer the rs4 i prefer the rs5 i think it's it's it is virtually the same as the rs4 in my mind but i think it is because it's just so visually stunning there's something about it and i don't know why i don't know if anything or much has been changed other than the opf filters which hasn't affected it too much if you don't know about opf filters guys google it or don't because it's boring as but it's all about basically um legislation regulations and keeping the sound down to make sure that you know we don't upset old grannies and people and 
people behind desks pushing pencils being bellends. But, excuse me, I didn't say that. But, um, yeah, basically, OPF filters are now in cars as standard um, because um, people are wanting to um, quiet down cars and making them uh, less noisy than they used to be. This, however, is still pretty noisy, but I'm going to go on to what I was basically saying, and that's about the RS4. I don't know what's done other than the OPF filters because the, the chassis is apparently virtually or very, very similar, but I will out ask Audi. Some people have said they prefer the RS4. Dynamically, for some reason, I prefer the feel of this. I don't know what, what's been done, but I love, love the feel of this car, and this is the kind of dream daily car that I would love to own and I would buy with my own money, categorically, 66,000 pound or not. Because for that money, there isn't anything else that really does everything this does, personally, for how much ground it covers and how quick it just puts you in the back of the seat. Smiles per miles, baby. Smiles per miles. Uh, what a machine it is, and it would be my daily of choice for that kind of money. There is so many features on this car. But I'm just going to go into the drive select modes, which is quite simple actually on this little toggle, uh, toggle, toggle switch. Uh, I'm going to put it in dynamic because we all know that dynamic is the most fun mode. Um, obviously this has got the um, uh, electro ride, um, so it's a, um, adaptive dampeners that actually, actually do actively work. Um, so if you put it on comfort etc it will be really really comfortable. I'm going to, it's in, it's in dynamic now but I'm going to put it into manual mode on the flapping panels. Jesus Christ, this car's quick. Um, I'm then going to just select some different modes. Uh, individual, obviously, you can you can play around with settings to how you want. You can adjust the steering input. You can adjust the um, engine response. You can adjust the suspension. So all in in between. Um, in that, you can kind of cal um, calibrate it to how you want individually. So I'm now in comfort. Definitely has got a lot quieter in here. Um, and it's yeah more sedate. Um, if I put my foot down, oh yeah, still gets up and goes, but it's a little bit less responsive and a little bit quieter for sure. Yeah, let's get it out of that mode for sure. But still, still awesome actually. There's an auto automatic mode that will um, again dynamically change the car to how it feels you're driving, um, and it will just do that automatically um, on the fly, automatically on itself. Um, but I like it in dynamic. I'd probably play around with the individual settings and maybe put a custom mode into as to what I like, perhaps. But I love it in a dynamic mode. Um, at no point, even in the dynamic mode, on these dewy, hideous um, roads, have I felt that the cars scared me, um, other than the fact that it's damn quick. Um, it scares me because it's damn quick and it covers ground so quick. But um, it feels so accomplished and so safe, and I can't believe it to be honest with you. It just feels, it just looks after you so so well. And um, and uh, yeah, if you had this kind of power, which actually some other cars do have, um, and there were two wheel drive, which I do often prefer, but with the RS range cars, they're just so good. They bridge the gap between the fun that you have in a rear wheel drive car um, over what this package gives you. Um, and it's just amazing, but in yeah, in one of those two-wheel drive cars, if you try and deploy um, 450 to probably more like 500 horsepower, that's probably really in this car. Um, on a dewy road like this, with that power, you would go sideways. And the moment you've got the car out of shape and you had to brake, etc., the car would be um, dangerous. Um, and I had a situation actually where I nailed it, and I don't know these roads really well, and that would have been very dangerous um, in one of those two wheel drive, powerful two wheel drive cars. Today with this car, actually, it felt scary, but it, I never felt like the car was out of control and it, I was in danger. And that's just a testament to how good this car uh, really, really is and how much it looks after you. And for that reason, that's why it is sublime and absolutely amazing. But I'm just gonna give the car a little bit more of a push. It's not perfect conditions. It is a little bit dewy, it is a little bit dangerous, but I'm gonna, Get, the, get it down to a lower RPM and I'm just gonna nail it. We are literally at one and a half thousand RPM and I'm gonna punch it. It just drops down and it goes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This car could get you in trouble pretty fast. Oh, and the sound as well, it sounds good. And the brake 
Chris are amazing as well. If you look um, on my pictures and videos, I'll, I'll put a bit of VT on now for you. The front and rear brakes on this car are massive, vented, cross-drilled um, uh, stoppers with nice, chunky ass calipers. Um, RS don't skimp on their braking systems either, even out of the factory without upgrades. And uh, that's great because they don't forget about anything in these cars. And that's why I massively always applaud um, Audi as a brand. They produce a fully buttoned up car that out of the factory does everything it needs to do to back up the power that it's got. It does sound good as well. Now this could be a bit leery. I'm not going to go too fast because it's, it's not my car. But Jesus, it's the motor. The motor is so responsive, and then you get someone pull out like that, and you've got a brake, and it's just got you. The RS5 has got you. What a machine. What a car. Audi UK, please give me one of these. <laughs> what a machine. What a machine. Let's really go to some slow, low, low down speed. Now, I'm in first gear. I'm going to go about 10 mile an hour, virtually, which there's no one about. I just want to see how much grip you've got. Actually, I'm going to go near enough zero. I'm not going to go zero because I get told off. We're fine. We're near near zero. Jesus! <laughs> it just grips, man. Honestly, I could do a 0 to 60. To I reckon that was. And actually, I should tell you about the 0 to 60 on this. The 0 to 60 is in the threes, guys. It's 3.9 seconds. And I've seen people test these and it gets about 3.8, 3.7 seconds. I'm going to do it again so you can see me. I'm going to go into first and I'm in manual. The grip, just watch this. Grip, no, no wheel spin at all, 60. <laughs> Jesus Christ, my God, this car is a weapon. <laughs> It's mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing. It hurts your head. It's that quick. The acceleration is ridiculous. And actually, dynamically, as a car all round, this car is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I love it. I want it. Audi, please give me one so I can do a long-term review. I love it. 20-inch alloy wheels. Shroud and P0 rubber. They're obviously doing a good job, whatever they're doing. So, uh, yeah, mega. So, yeah, what do you think, guys? First and foremost, what do you think of the green? It's grown on me a hell of a lot, and I must admit, I love it. it Looks-wise, I love that car so much. But, yeah, um, what do you guys think? Um, I'm going to put a little um, question mark um, for you to answer. Yay or nay, top right-hand corner, what do you think? Um, yeah. But that's the end of my drive. I'm actually kind of shaking from like excitement and kind of a cross between fear and excitement because it's one of those cars that's got so much power and torque available to it at all times, even low down, without honestly going illegal speeds. And for that reason, you have so much fun. And it, look at it, it's just stunning. Um, I honestly really, really want one now. I really, really want one. Hopefully, um, at a later stage, maybe um, Audi UK can uh, let us have one as a press car just for even a day. As a dynamic car, honestly, that car is close to being second to none. It's one of the one of the best cars I've driven in a long time. It's kind of what the Audi RS, um, TT RS done for me as well. And I remember getting out of the car going, that's one of the best cars I've ever driven, um, genuinely. And that now is one of my favourite cars I've driven for years. And I love it and I want it. And it's so, so fast. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the drive, guys, as much as I did. And um, look out for the next video, obviously. Thank you so much for watching, guys. As always, like, share, comment and subscribe. We'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.